Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at the new YOLO Nest model for human post estimation. You can both use the new pre-trained model for human post estimation, but we can also train our own. This is the new state of the art for post estimation. In this video here, we're going to see how we can run quick inference with the quick start tutorial that they have. And then we're also going to take a look at how we can fine tune your own YOLO Nest post estimation model. This model here just came out and it is really awesome. So first of all here, let's just do a comparison of the YOLO V8 model for post estimation and this new state-of-the-art YOLO NAS model for post estimation. They have four variants, the nano, small, medium, and large. Here we can see the graph. So if you just take a look at it, we can see that this is actually like way better compared to the YOLO V8 model. And in some cases, it is also faster. If you just take the medium model here, it is better compared to the YOLO V8 model, both on latency, but also the accuracy. But here we can see that we get down to 40 milliseconds inference speed with the medium model on a CPU. So we are actually able to run this near real time. In this video here, again, we're going to see everything, how you can run inference with the model. We're going to see a lot of results, and we're also going to see how we can fine tune your own YOLO NAS post estimation model. So let's just jump into it. So we're now open up this Google Colab notebook from Daisy AI with the super gradients. You can use this directly out of the box. Definitely also go check out the GitHub repositories. They also have their update detection model, which is called, just called YOLO NASH. First of all here, we just need to connect to a runtime in our Google Colab notebook. Again, you can both use the CPU, but you can also use a GPU. First of all, we need to pip install the dependencies. So we just go in and clone this and pip install our super gradient version for YOLO NASH with post estimation. Then we also just pip install this YouTube DL so we can go in and download YouTube videos and run this post estimation model on YouTube videos directly. After we've done that, we just need to import the dependencies here while it's, it's doing the pip install up here. Then we have some helper functions for downloading some images of people posing. This is just help functions. We won't really dive into that. Here you can specify the different URLs where you want to download the images from. Um, and then you'll just get a list with those images. So now we get to the fun part. We have to instantiate the model. So we just create an instance of our model from super gradients. This is how easy it is to do. We just call from super gradients the training import models, but we can also just from common dot names import models. Then we create an instance yolonas underscore post. We set that equal to models dot get. Then we need to specify which of the models that we want to use. And then we're going to use a pre-trained one, which is pre-trained on the Coco post data set. And then we're also going to transfer our model to CUDA device. You can also do a check here if CUDA is available or else use the CPU. So here we're just creating an instance. It'll probably just take a couple of seconds. It will download the model here automatically if it's not already in your directory. There we go. Now we're creating an instance of our model. We can do prediction with a one liner here. We just have to like put our YOLO NAS model to the device that we want to use. And then we just call this predict function throw in the input file that we want to. We can see here all the different like sources that we can throw into it. So let's now go down and see our make predict function. This is just a function that you can use directly. Basically all it's doing is that it just called this predict method on our YOLO Nash model that we have initiated. And then if the action is equal to show, we're going to show the results, but we can also call this save here as an input argument to this make prediction function. And then we can both show and save our results. So let's now just create this function here and then we can go down and do Im inference on images. So here we have all our inference images. We have this list of people posing. We're just going to take the different indexes and we're going to show the results directly in our Google Colab notebook. Let's just run all of them and then we can take a look at all the results after that. So let's now take a look at the first results. This is a rather large image, but we can see that we actually just detect the person. This is a basketball player in this example. We take all the key points like the elbows, um, the hands, shoulders, like ears, um, eyes and nose and so on. So we are basically just detecting every single key point that we're interested in in the human body. So this was the first example. Let's just scroll down and see some other ones. And again, it doesn't really matter like the pose of the person acts like doing this. It gets all the key points with a pretty high um, accuracy. And we see that it's, it's a bit off here in the legs. But again, if we just take a look at the other results here, this is some pretty awesome results like this post estimation model here is really good. So then now going to down and just predict using a URL. You can just specify an arbitrary URL, make a prediction. Let's just run it directly. We can also go down and only display the skeletons if we don't really care about the image, but only the post that we get out from the model. Again, we have some help functions. We're just going to run that directly and then we're going to see the results here at the end. So here we see that now we're not displaying the image, we're only displaying the key points that we're detecting with our human post estimation model. We can also do inference on video. This is the last thing that we're going to run through with these examples. And then in a second, we're going to see how we can fine tune these models ourselves. So you can actually like just take data sets with different animals, could be like cats, dogs, uh, horses, and so on. 
So now we're just going to set up some code for downloading YouTube videos. Here, we just run it directly. We have the YouTube URL, the video name, and then we're just going to process the video. It's just going to loop through all the frames in our image and do a prediction. So now we're just going to see the results here from the videos. Again, this is just awesome. You can see how good it acts like it takes its frame by frame. We're not doing any tracking at all. It's doing inference on every single frame and it doesn't really matter. It detects it in every single frame with very high accuracy. Okay, so now we're going to have even more fun. We're going to fine tune our own YOLONAS model on a custom data set. Jumped into a new notebook. You can find all this in the description under the video. So this is a new repo. We're just going to pip install all the dependencies again and also import them. So we basically just have this whole notebook here. We have covered most of it on how to run inference. So we have the sneak peek inference with YOLONAS post. We already did that. So we're just going to minimize that. This inference on video, we've already covered that. So you can also train here directly for a configuration file. You can even run inference with webcam but now we're going to go down to the most important part on how to fine tune a YOLO Nash post model. The first thing that we need to do is to define the trainer which is actually like going to train our model and then we also need our custom data set. Then we basically just need to train our model on our custom data set. At the end we can do inference, we can export our model and then you can use it in your own applications and projects. So right now we're just going to from super gradients we can import the trainer. We're going to specify a checkpoint directory and then we can set up a trainer with our experiment name and also the checkpoint root directory. So we can always go back and retrain the model, resume training and so on. But we're going to set that up here. So then we're going to download our data set with animal post estimation data sets. You can find a lot of different data sets out there for um, human post estimation, but also like post estimation of different animals. Now we're just going to download the data set directly. We specify the data set ID, the annotations ID, then we have the file IDs and then we just have this um, for loop here running through all our file IDs and download it from this Google Drive. So you can either like connect it from like RoboFlow, Google Drive, whatever. You can just set it up directly in the Google Colab notebook. So now we're just going to unzip our images and we're going to run this here as well, which is basically just our animal post estimation Jolo NAS dataset parameters. Then we just have a helper function again for opening up a file. We have our annotations. We open our annotations, which is just key points.json. We're going to take a look at that file in just a second. And then we also have our configuration for our um, dataset. So let's now just run this and we can go over here to the left. We can then see our images. So it's not just open one of the images, we can then see it over here to the right. So we just have like different animals or like dogs in this example here. You should be able to go over and find our annotations file. So here we have our key points.json. So here we can basically see the whole structure for our key points.json. Again, it is just all the key points for each individual image. We also have this animal post, post estimation, data set parameters um, in this YAML file here. So again, this is not like too important, we just have um, the key point colors, edge colors, and so on. So it's just the parameters for our data set. You can use that out of the box. But again, if you use your own custom data set, you just want to make sure that you actually like have that. They also provide this annotation file breakdown, which we just sort from the JSON file. So we have the images, we have the annotations, and also the categories based on the category or like the class, if it's a dog, cat, sheep, or like what type of animal. And then we also have like super category, assigned a unique ID, the key points, and also the skeletons. So this is basically like all the things that we need to actually like label our data set with before we can go in and train these post estimation models. We have some help functions here for plotting some sample of our images. And here we can see some of the examples that we're going to run. So we would have like some dogs, cats, sheep, cows, horses, and so on. So basically just a lot of different animals and we have key points for each of them that we're going to train this YOLNAS post model on. We have the data sets and also our data loaders. It is not too important. They have help functions and data loaders for everything. You can import all of these things here. We won't go into details like there's so much, but it's just like loading in the data set, splitting the data set into your train set, test set, and also your validation set. You see there's a lot of code here. We're just going to run that directly. Then we can do the actual like splitting of our data set. So we create an instance of this animal post estimation data set class. We specify the data directory, where our images are, the key point JSON file, and so on. You can use this directly out of the box. As long as you have the correct JSON format, you don't need to change anything here, even though you trained it on your own custom data set that you have labeled yourself. So now we're going to split our data set. We have our key points transformations as well. So first of all, we need to transform our key points, or at least we can, we can do that. 
if we want to do some kind of like data augmentation on our data set to get more robust predict predictions, but also more general model. So we're just going to run these key points transformations. Now we have all our key point transformations. We can then go down and apply them. So we have our train transformations. Then we can go down and create our instances of our data set where we also specify our transformations that we just defined up above. We can also pass in a PyTorch data loaders argument when we actually like create an instance of our data loader. So we have that directly in PyTorch. So here we have a data loader from PyTorch towards the util the data import data loader we have all the data loaders from daisy and now we can just create it here with pytorch now we're going to create an instance of our model this is the exact same thing as we did in our inference script or like in inference notebook so now we have created an instance we're going to use the launch model specify the number of joints here for the number of classes that we want to act like predict at the end so this will be the output of our last layer in our network and then we're also going to use pre-trained weights from the Cocoa Post model. Again, you can just leave this blank if you want to train it from scratch, but it will take significantly longer compared to just using these pre-trained weights and it should actually like be good enough. Now we need to specify our training parameters, maximum number of epochs, like how long we want to train our model for, the last function that we want to use, the optimizer, different types of metrics that we want to lock during training. Um, so this is not like too important. You can use the default parameters, then you can tune them afterwards. So now we can just directly run this. We have our training parameters. We set up all the callback functions that we want to use throughout the training process. So again, I've covered all of this in other videos here on my channel. I have a whole playlist with deep learning, like how we can use and train deep learning models from scratch. We cover all of these different kind of parameters and we won't dive into that. It will take like hours to explain all of these parameters. And right now we're just going to use it out of the box. Now we get to the fun part. We have covered like all of it. And now we can start the training of our model. And that is actually relatively easy to do. We just call this trainer.train. We specify the model that we want to use, the train parameters, and also our train loader and validation loader. And now we can just directly run this train method and it should start the training. We can see some of the outputs that we get. Training epoch zero, it is still running here. We're not getting any errors. We can see the number of GPUs that we're running on. One, full data set size, the number of batches per GPU. So right now we're running with a batch size of 16. We can see the number of iterations per epoch, gradients updates per epoch, and so on. And then we can see the results. Then we can actually just see all the losses here for our model while this training is not like too important here to start with, but we should probably take a look at um, the class loss, just the loss in general, but also the loss in the section over union. So here we just stop the model after five epochs. We can then go in and see the results. Like for every epoch, we get all these validation uh, metrics, but we also get the training metrics. We can see how they evolve over time, if they're increasing or decreasing. Um, then you can see like once your model acts like start to converge. So yeah, start after five epochs or else it will just take forever. We can also go in and resume the training if you want to train more after taking a look at the metrics. Now let's go down and take the best trained model. If you just go inside our directories, we can actually go inside our checkpoints. My first uh, Y in post run, then we can see the run. We get the errors model, checkpoint for the best model, epoch five, and also the latest model. Now we can just go in and get this file. You can download it directly here in the folder if you want to use it somewhere else. So now we can go down and get the best model that we have trained. We can specify the type of the model that we want to use, the number of classes, and then the checkpoint instead of a pre-trained model. But now we just specify checkpoint underscore best. Now we're going to evaluate the best trained model on the test set. So let's now run it here. After we've done that, we can go down and predict with the best model that we have loaded in. Again, we've only trained on five epochs. You should probably like train it longer, but again, it will just take um, a very long time. So let's go down and see the results after only five epochs. Again, it has not covered at all. So you should probably like train it for longer. So here we can see that we have 28 um, examples that we're going to run through in our test example. We can see um, all the, the losses here and also the average position and also average recall. So yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't look like too good here, but again, it's still not like too bad. Let's go down and actually like, see the inference on an image. So we specify a URL. We call the predict method again, specify the image URL, the confidence score here, and also dot show. Here we see that we don't really get any results. Let's just try to like lower the confidence score. Let's see results. Again, only five epochs. We should be able to get this exact same results as we saw in the other videos. If we're just training it until it converges, this model here, we probably have to like train for like 10, 10 20 epochs, something like that before we get some meaningful results. We also have a very large data set, so it will require a lot of training. This model here is state of the art. It is very cool. Definitely check it out, run inference, try it out with your own videos. And then you can also try to train it on your own, maybe on a smaller data set as well, a more specific data set. So I hope you guys have learned a ton in this video here and that you want to go in and actually like check this out. This is very cool. It runs fast, very accurate. We get some really nice results and you can directly use it out of the box. Just 
Use these notebooks, they'll label down in the description, try them out, throw you the results down in the comment section, and also what you think of this model. So thank you guys for watching this video here. Remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Also like this video here if you like the video and you want more in the future. I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, stay tuned.